This is a quick tutorial on using Google Forms in the new format that's not reflected in the uh, current tutorials that are out there, and also on using this idea of branching logic so that you don't necessarily commit every question to every respondent if they don't need to see those questions. This is a bare bones little survey about Skip's Restaurant. There's a question about dining. Have you ever eaten here? Yes or no? If you have, there's some questions I want to ask you. If they're not, then there's no sense in you seeing the rest of the question, and we're going to use branching logic to skip to the end of the form and just submit it. The next section is the quality of service. You see there are two questions here. The one called quality, and the question there is how would you rate the quality of the service on your last visit? And another called speed, how would you rate the promptness of service on your last visit? These both use this linear idea, rating one through five scale. You can change the scale if you want to when you create these. And then there's a third section here that asks about the quality of the food. And the first question asks how many guests there were, one, two, three, four, or five or more. And that's all this survey is asking right now. Of course, you can add more questions anytime you want to, add more sections anytime you want to. Very simple process to do that. But we're going to use this simple version of it to kind of get an idea of how you create this form. So I'll create this form in front of your eyes simply by going to my Google Drive and making a new Google Form. Now, I've started that form here. I've called it Skip's Other Restaurant because I already have a saved form called Skip's Restaurant. So these questions are about Skip's Other Restaurant. And you can see that I've added a, a question called Dining. And I'm, I'm going to add some options in a minute, but the question Dining needs to have a little more explanation. So I'm going to go down to the More menu down here and open up the description. And I'll give a description of what I'm actually asking this question now. And the question is very simple. Have you ever eaten at Skip's Other Restaurant? The choices are pretty simple, yes or no. If they answer no, I don't need to submit the rest of the form to them, so I'll use branching logic in a minute to move from here to the end of the form. I am going to make this a required question, and that's the only question I'm going to ask in this initial section. I'm going to make a new section now by clicking on this little section tool over here. And this section has to do with quality of service, with a quick description that explains why I'm asking these questions. Now, this section doesn't have any questions in it yet, so I'll click on the little Add Question tool over here. The first question has to do with the quality of service, so I'll give it a short title here. I'll go down to the More menu and turn on the description, and I'll actually put the question in this part. How would you rate the quality of service you received on your last visit? I'm going to give the choice as a linear question from 1 through 5. So instead of being a multiple choice default question, I'll choose linear scale over here. One through five is fine, although obviously you can change this to any scale you'd like to. The labels are going to be poor and excellent. I'm going to make this a required question. And now I'm going to add another question. Go to the question tool over here. And this question has to do with the speed of service. Again, I need to make that question really obvious to people, so I'm going to go down to the More menu, turn on the description, and actually ask the question in this part right here. How would you rate the promptness of the service of your last visit? This feels like a linear scale question to me as well, so I'll go up here and choose that, linear scale, and the labels I'll give it are very slow and very prompt. I'd like to make this a required question as well. And because they've already answered yes, that they've eaten here, I don't need to branch any logic out of this. I don't need to use branching logic to get to the next place. I simply need to add another section on here, which I'll do by clicking on the section tool. And this section asks about the quality of the food. With a little description here so that they'll know what they're about to get into. I need to start adding questions, and I'll just add one in this section for, for brevity here. The first thing I want to know is how many guests were there in your party? And again, oops, sorry, not quests, guests. And I'll go down and turn on the description so that I can actually ask the question right here. It's a little bit cleaner, I think, to do it that way. And in this case, I'm going to choose a multiple choice option for the question because I want to know fairly precisely how many people, if they had a small group or a large group. So the first option is going to be one. The next option is going to be two then three, and four, and those are the normal numbers that you might see in a restaurant group, but I'm gonna give them an option of five or more for larger parties. And again, I'd like to make this a required question. 
And then we'll call this survey done. Um, obviously, you could add more sections and more questions if you needed to. But here's the logic. Have you ever eaten here? Yes or no? If you have, I simply want them to continue this form. If the answer is no, I just want them to submit the form and that's that. They don't need to see the other questions because they've never eaten here. So we're going to go back to the first section here where I ask the yes or no question that, that starts this branching logic. And I'm going to choose down here to go to a section based on the answer that they give me. If they say yes, I simply want them to continue the next section. That makes sense. If they say no, I simply I, other, I could send them to another specific part, another section that I've already created if I wanted to, but I'm simply going to ask them at this point to su submit the form because I have no other questions to ask them. So this will, this will branch. If they say no, they'll simply submit the form and that's that. Otherwise, if they say yes, it's going to continue to the next section, which is the default behavior for all the questions that you ask. So for quality of service, they've already told me they've eaten here, so I'm going to ask them these questions. And I don't need at this point to give any branching logic because I simply want them to continue the next section. If I did, there's a little selection down here that lets me choose another section to go to or simply submit the form. I don't need to change it in this case. They'll simply go to this question, and then when they're done with this question, they're, they're finished with the form entirely, and it'll get submitted. So let's see how this works. I'll send it to myself. I'll send it by email to myself here. The subject of the email is um, fill out my survey. And I'm not going to include a message here, but it probably is good practice to do that if you would like to explain what's going on with this survey. I'm going to definitely include the form in the email and click on send. Now I need to go check my mail. And you can see there's some email from me about filling out my survey. I'll click there. I see that there's a form about Skip's Other Restaurant. Have I ever eaten? Have you ever eaten at Skip's Restaurant? Yes, I have. Continue. Now, continue is because there is branching logic here, and this is going to drop me out of email, but it's going to send me to a, an obviously, obviously easy place to continue filling out the form. So it's asking me about the quality of food. I'll give it a three and a four here and go to the next section. How many guests were there? There were three. I'm ready to submit the form. And those data have been recorded within the Google Form structure itself. Let's go back to the form. And we'll answer this in another way. I'll send it again to myself. Include the form in the email. Go check my email. And here it is. Fill out my form again. I'll go there. In this case, I'm going to answer no to show how that process works with the branching logic. So I've never eaten there. Continue. And done. It doesn't ask me the other questions because it branched to the end. I click Submit. And that data have also been recorded. Now let's go back and look at the form. You can see that there have been two responses to this form. And if I click there, it gives me a little graph with a little bit of instruction about how you see the summary or individual responses there. That, that I think you only see the first time you use this new form. You can see that it's still accepting responses. So as people are answering this, this is going to change in real time. But there's one no and one yes response there. Quality of service, uh, the average of one response was three. And the average of one response for speed was also was four. And then 100% of the guests said there were, only, there were three people that were in the party. Of course, there's only been one response. And this would have different colors in a pie chart depending on the responses that you got. So that's a way to look at your data really quickly. So I hope this has opened your eyes up a little bit to the idea of branching logic and the way you submit forms and the way you collect data on the forms.